Cormier, 6 a.m. In this discipline, nothing is won in advance. Both favorites and amateurs know that, and each has their own way of concentrating. Before setting off on this adventure, each of them shares a mix of apprehension and excitement. Sweden, Australia, Asia and the USA are all on the starting line. Race bibs showing that the participants have come from the four corners of the world, but at the moment the nationality is of no importance. It's the 1600 runners hearts which beat in unison. Each of them know that they have 33 hours to complete this semi-tour of Mont Blanc, 119 kilometers and 7,200 meters of ascent, while the first runners will finish in around 15 hours. This race, launched in 2009, takes its name from the historic paths of the ex-Duchy of Savoy. So they're off on the Trace des Ducs de Savoie. The fastest take the lead, clearly demonstrating their intention to win the TDS, the most technical of the UTMB's races, requiring a sure-footedness and the capacity to accumulate both long descents and long climbs, exposed to the heat of the day. The first 800 metres, which lead to the Col Chécrui, will be run by the race leaders at a little more than 8 kilometres per hour. First refreshment post at Giocomo's, host of the venue. The association, a chacun sans Everest, supported by around 30 solidarity race bibs, has joined the volunteers here to support the runners. 92 countries represented and three countries' paths involved. The transnational dimension of the event is honored. This is the opportunity to note that it is not only the UTMB which benefits from an international aura. The TDS runners haven't hesitated to come from far and wide to participate. Day breaks, the mist clears. After having reached the summit of the day's first difficulty, the ambience amongst the race leaders is completely different and they don't hesitate in relaunching their drive. Further back, groups begin to form, runners control their speed and stick to plans made during their training. For those with an aim, all they have to do now is respect the time barrier charts. At last, the runners reach the Mont Favre Ridge at 2,435 metres facing the Noir de Perteret and the south face of Mont Blanc. After this long 10 kilometer over a climb of 1200 meters and a descent of 450 meters, runners arrive in the Haut Val Vene, a large valley which is also the start of the Italian route up Mont Blanc, in the bottom of which lies Lac Combal. This area is well known by photographers searching for beautiful images. At less than three hours into the race, the runners are still fresh, but the climb which follows in the direction of the Col Chavan may calm their enthusiasm. I'm with my friend who runs. And it's super beau, so it's perfect. Super journey. <laughs> there is no longer inactivity amongst the volunteers as they rally around to serve hot drinks. There are more than 2,000 of them who support the runners in their quest. They come from all over France and sometimes beyond to experience and share in this adventure.
Michel Lannes calls the shots in the ascent of the Col Chavan, highest point of the race at 2,592 meters. and grassy sector at Lac Vernet has been equipped with a circumventing footpath which allows the runners to discover the area while at the same time conserving it. Reference for environment take the responsibility of reminding runners that they must not use their poles in these humid zones which are fragile. Refreshments at the Col du Petit Saint-Bernard have the air of a village fete. Runners share their first impressions and help each other. Certain amongst them will continue onwards together. After this regenerating pause, the trail runners pass through the Espace Saint Bernardo on the Italian French border, which, amongst others, unite the communities of La Tuile and Sears with the ski area of the same name. At Sayers, race strategies are emerging. Some pass by at speed, while others take their time. Bourg Saint Maurice is the first point where they can receive assistance from their nearest and dearest. Ça fait du bien cette petite pause. The checking of obligatory equipment is done in good spirit. It gives the runners time to breathe a bit before setting out again. And they attack the race's biggest difficulty, 2,000 meters of ascent in full sun. The first woman, Mimi Kotka, takes the lead at Fort de la Platte. She is almost an hour ahead of her pursuer, but she appears to be suffering from the heat. Can she go the distance? As forecast, it is hot and bodies are being severely tested. Competitors are stretched to their limits and have great difficulty in protecting themselves from the sun. After this 2,000 meter climb, the favorites arrive at the Passeur de Pralognon and its very technical descent. It is here that the runners' resilience and endurance make a difference. 
Not the time to make a mistake if they want to protect their chances of a victory, not mentioning what could happen. At the Cormé de Roseland, Michel Lann snuck away from the others. His stride is still supple and his enjoyment of the race is mirrored on his face. Right behind him, Sylvain Camus and Antoine Guillon have taken things into hand. They don't seem to be affected by the heat. While at the refreshment post, the trail runners now take the time to eat in a more substantial way and recuperate. They also find their spares bags and prepare for the second part of the race. We can appreciate the respect for biodiversity and a large-scale sporting event which the footpaths through the humid zone of the SOS made by the organisation demonstrate. This work was carried out under the supervision of the UTMB's Commission of the Environment with the participation of members from the community of Beaufort and personnel from the ONF. Meanwhile, the pursuers tumble full speed along the footpath known as the Passage du Curé, created in the 19th century by Curate Frisson. For them, no respite on the descents, it is more a question of gaining a few precious minutes on those in the lead. These great big pastures alongside peaks and glaciers give the TDS its wild side, far from any urbanisation. At the Col du Joli in the commune of Hortelouse, Mimi Kotkar is still in the lead for the women and her smile is still with her. Men, Sylvain Camus and Antoine Guillon arrive virtually hand in hand at the Col du Tricot. They leave again chasing Michel Lannes. But with a 10 minute delay on the rescue worker at the PGHM at Les Houches, they don't connect. The latter begins to savour his victory.
for a final sprint at breakneck speed from Le Ouche, the two fugitive companions decide to finish in unison. Sylvain and Antoine created a show and arrived in equal place on the finishing line of the TDS. Mimi Kotka made a final sprint despite a large advance upon her rivals to win the TDS hands down. She is placed 10th scratch and takes the female record for the event. Twelve hours later, there is deliverance, also for Michel Poletti, organizer and runner, who crosses the finishing line dead beat, but as happy as the other runners to have arrived at the end of this wild, technical and truly mythical race.